of the um, yay of the night of of the of the year, rather. <laughs> Yep. Ooh, I'm a, a, a little behind, so if y'all bear with me. Um, anyways, okay. hello and welcome to our second book club night. I'm your host, Jen from Book Lore uh, Productions, along with my counterpart, Heather. Um, hello. Nice to meet you both, ladies. Yay. Here's Heather. Nice to meet you, too. I was really excited when you said, sure, you'll be a part of a book club. <laughs> yeah, Super it sounds like fun. Back. I did this with um, another book club and. New York last a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, we FaceTimed actually, but this ah. is cool. This okay. is cool. Cool. And um, and uh, so we're trying a little something different this time around, and we hope that we'll okay. keep improving book club night with your help, our uh, our viewers. Okay. So if they have suggestions, um, just give us a shout out at the uh, contact us page. And otherwise, let's get on into this and get into the good stuff. And yes. we want to welcome author Celeste Fletcher McHale uh, to our June 2016 book club night. There she is. Yay! Yay. And... I guess we'll jump on in to the um, the questions for you. Okay. I'm trying to move away when I take a drag off this cigarette. So <laughs> <laughs> it's understandable. So it doesn't look like a, a dragon out there? <laughs> yeah. It's like Knights and dragons. It, it, it feels like it should be smoking around here, but, it, you know, it's, it's, it's just me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jen, do you want to start with the the questions or do you want me to start? Um have at it. All right. So, Celeste, you said in many, many interviews that um this book is based off of your friendship with two other women. Yes. Um can you can you uh talk to us about your friends? Because we've read about them, but, you know, um, it's different than someone telling you about their friends. Yeah, I, right. Um, I don't really t say a lot about, cause she, normally the LRA character would have been with me tonight, but um, <laughs> her husband's home from a job, and she's had to stay up. She's, like, grounded, so she, you know, can't come out <laughs> and play while he's home from, from job. So, anyway, she, uh, she was with me for the New York thing, and they I, they laughed the entire hour we were talking but um yeah there i i don't know and I, and i've said this often too i don't know how people who don't have friends like i have function I, they're so such a huge part of my life that i, I don't I, I and it's not that we're together all day long every day you know i go two or three days without seeing her with L the LRA character and but never more than three or four and she goes on book tours with me oh. um, <laughs> Fine. You know, um, the last time we were we were in um, oh Athens Georgia and I was walking down this set of marble stairs and I fell down I mean like oh. force I mean just splattered all over the lobby in the hotel <laughs> All my stuff. That sounds something like I have done. Everywhere, you know, all this good. And everybody runs over, okay? And I'm just going to call her Ella Ray because I don't want you to know her real name. So Ella Ray runs over there, looks at me, she goes, keep looking at that damn phone while you walk it. And everybody <laughs> kind of looks at her like, oh, my God. <laughs> but, you know, that's truly the way we speak to each other. So it, it's not – the stuff in the book is not made-up stuff. It's, it's who we are. And it's the way we treated each other. And until I wrote this book, I had no idea that that was really rare. And that that friendships like ours were real. I thought everybody had buddies like I had buddies. And that's not true. Which is horrible. And I hate the way that the media and reality shows portray friendship. It makes me want to punch a hole in something. because, And I've said this a hundred times. 
true friends say bad things to your face and they say good things behind your back. And that's just, that's, that's the God's honest truth. That's the, the way we are. That's the way it's supposed to be. So they're, they're really wonderful women. Lane was a wonderful woman and Ella Ray is a wonderful woman. I mean, it is rare because it's so easy to get in fights with women now nowadays. Everything's so personal. Like, it's a personal affront when they tell you the truth, whereas it shouldn't be. You should be able to take it like a big girl. Oh. But and then Start, Listen, they'll tell me in a second if something, like, I don't know why you, uh, you, know, you need to take that off. And like, <laughs> I don't know what look you're going for, but you missed, you know. <laughs> oh, God. They're, they're not, mm-mm. And you just deal with it. It's not like, it's not like, I mean, it never offended me. I don't, I, I don't know. It's because we were just so close for so long that that's the way, you know, I don't know why. I just know that it was all based on extreme honesty and it still is with Ray and I, and um, it just works for us. You know. Well, you know, know well, why. Because of the history there, you know she's not trying to hurt you. She's just oh, no. trying to help you, which is, it's hard right. when you, especially if you're making a friend as an adult. You okay. know, it's kind of hard to see whether they're trying to hurt your feelings or you're right. And another just thing being honest. About growing up in a small town, you know, you have your circle, you have your core. And I've become, I've got other female friends now, of course, but... I don't have one like those two and I don't think probably, probably, um, I will never have, I'm sure I'll never have another one like her or El Ray, but I've got a couple that are, that I'm tight with and that El Ray and I are both tight with, but, um, you know, it's just the history is not, you can't get that back. Yeah. And, and it's just, it just worked for us. I'm watching a cat fight. (laughs) <laughs> like an actual cat or like <laughs> there's no like, like a cat like a tom cat and a mama cat oh okay oh, no. it's hey. the heat it's got everybody crazy she's, that's she's right slapped him. it's all good okay <laughs> life on the farm yes no getting fresh <laughs> alright Jen All right. still with me I am. Yes, um, so I guess my questions okay. are kind of. Um, there we go. Are um, where are they? Oh, here we go. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm with it tonight, y'all. Um, so, um, the uh, secret ingredient, as we all come to find out, is. Um, is love. 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 And that's pretty much with anything you're cooking. Um, I guess I am. We talked about that in the discussion questions. So, um, do you think food actually tastes better if you prepare it for those you love? Uh, and do you have something special that you cook? I do think that it's, um, of course, more special if you're preparing it for somebody that you love. I think it, that's that's true for everybody. I'm not a baker. I can't. My cakes are hilarious. They. I don't care how much time <laughs> I spend with them or what I do. They fall apart in the middle, and or then I have 75 toothpicks trying to hold them together and then <laughs> cut well, the cake no. and power saw to get. You know, it's it's horrible. Um, I'm I am the official gumbo maker of this family, and oh. the official uh, chili maker and homemade soup maker. So it's it, but it's got to be gigantic pots, you know. We tailgate a lot. Your big old and large yeah. stock pots and yes, like huge, you know what we shrimp what bowl we pots or crawfish bowl pots for us, yeah. Oh, so I, yeah, I guess being in Louisiana, yeah, just, yeah. right? So we that's the bowl, that's the pot I use to make gumbo with, but that stir in the roux. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like goes on forever. <laughs> I bet. The color, if it's not the perfect color, it's terrible. So, you know, it just goes on forever. But I don't like that part. But, yep, 
I'm 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 the gumbo specialist around here. Okay. So Heather, you got another one for us? I've I've never made gumbo before. Really? I don't even think I've ever had gumbo before. I'm trying to think oh about it. Oh my! I You're know. Gonna make a trip. I'm gonna have to because my parents are not southern at all, like at all. But oh. I've lived I've lived here my whole pretty much my whole life, so I've uh, I've been missing all, out. Ain't no self-respecting Southern girl going to start with no roux in a jar. you got to do it yourself. I've never heard of roux in a jar. I've made it for other things, but not, ooh, from a jar. Ooh. Oh, there's there, there's roux in a jar that I just, I can't even look at it when I go in the grocery store. <laughs> <laughs> Avert your eyes. Oh, yeah, because yes. I'm more of a baker than anything else. Oh, I wish I could. I don't know. I think it's because I don't have any patience with that. Oh yeah, and it just I get aggravated, and it says you know put the cakes on the rack and cool them out. I'm like I'm not doing all that, you know. So I start icing them before they're ready to ice. <laughs> so it's all like melting off. No. See that's that's my hard. That's the hardest part for me is having to wait to ice it. I get impatient. Lost you ladies. Lost you ladies. Oh, there you are. There we are. I'm okay. here. Oh. There's. Welcome back, Jen. Yes. <laughs> I see you. Okay. Um, Go ahead. All right. Uh, so your next next book, uh, Memories of Magnolias, is slated to come out in 2017 with yes. Harper Collins. Yes. Uh, and um, can you tell us anything about your return to um, Bo de Bo de <laughs> I'm going to mess this up again. I had it earlier. Okay. Bon du Falls. Bon du Falls, you said it right. All right. Bon du Falls. It is not um, any part, it is not a sequel or anything about Bon du Falls. It's totally out of my head. Um, oh, nice. It's about a, yeah, it's about a girl that went through a flood. It's from Baton Rouge that went through a flood in Biloxi. And ended up on a roof with um, a family and a guy. And what happens from there? No. Oh. So we won't be learning anything more about the Thompson family and their naming orchards, huh? <laughs> uh, well, I tell you what, we might learn more about them if I decide to go back and do something else. But I pr this is probably going to be my. Um, this is probably going to be my my. I fulfilled my obligation with Harper Collins after the second book, so I doubt if I go that direction again. Oh, okay. Um, I have something else on my mind I want to do. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure they're not going to want it. Um, <laughs> no. So, you know, and I don't mean that in a bad way. I'm forever grateful for them, and they've been good to me, and I just don't think they're going to want the third book, you know. Yeah. I just don't think, and it's something I really feel strongly about writing and I'm I literally must get it out of my system so I, I, I'm pretty sure that they're not going to want it all great writers start that way that's yeah true. stay true to your stories that's what people tell me at least I don't know what did you say you, you stopped for a second oh no I said you have to stay true to your stories yeah you, well, you have to just stay true to yourself and I yeah. think my um my thing about them, and I get it because, you know, it's it's a Christian publishing company, and they don't want, I had to fight for every every piece I got in Hummingbird Cake, but, and I get that they didn't want, you know, their target our audience did not want to hear cussing, and they didn't want to hear about affairs and about drinking, but on the other hand, I was, you know, if I can't tell the truth about what happened, that I, I don't want to tell this story, you know. I don't. I wasn't proud of any of it, but it's the way most of it happened. So I'm, it's just the way it was. And well, I, I felt really censored. Mm -hmm. And that I'm. I don't know if it's it's like hard for me to to feel like I can't say what I need, what needs to be said, you know. But I mean, it yeah. was in no way their fault. Uh, you know, I signed. So, y'all there? Yeah, yes, I'm here. 
We're just listening. Okay. It's in no way their fault. Um, you know, they suggested, you know, let's take this language out. Let's take that language out. I would put, I would say, no, I don't want to. Well, now I have some reviews that are less than, you know, I don't know if y'all have read them or not, but some mm -hmm. people are really offended by it. And I mean, I get it because of the publisher. Um, and it's not that I'm aggravated with them. It's just, if you can see past a little bit of language, and it's a very little bit of language, and there's nothing like that and no vivid sex scenes, if you can get past that and just see that the book is about forgiveness between a man and a woman and friendship that will that knows no boundaries. And I don't know how that could ever be a bad thing. You know what I mean? Yes. And uh, for me, I, I thought it was kind of refreshing um, because I, I read all... Yeah, I, I'm, I'm with you. Um, I'll, I'll read um, a whole bunch of genres. I read Christian fiction. I read murder mysteries. I read romance I, in history. And it just... My tastes are all over the map, so I thought it was kind of right. actually refreshing that um, you brought up an affair, and it, and to me, it just opened up a whole possibilities of talking points if you did this in a, a church group um, and talk exactly uh, ladies' church group, and you uh, got to talking about it, and you know, because you know, at s some point in time, somebody has done something that they may well, I mean, or may not be uh, proud of. And, um, and, get, and my whole point was you get over the, you can get over these things. You know, mm -hmm. they don't have to be, they don't have to be marriage ending. They don't have to be, you can get over these things, but Lord have mercy. Ooh, I've gotten some, I mean, I get personal emails that and I don't know how people get my email address, but I get personal emails that are like, um, one, and this was the worst one, and I don't read reviews. I, I stopped reading reviews a long time ago. Boy, they, they make Ella Ray mad, though. <laughs> um, but anyway, she'll call me. But I'll get, like, personal emails, that, and one of them said, um, you're going to hell, and your friend is already there. What? I'm like, are, are you serious? Are you, are, and you're speaking this from a Christian standpoint? I don't think we worship the same Jesus. I'm thinking that person must be a troll. I don't know. Like, and I mean, who does that? It's the same people who get in internet fights. Like, I just... But, I mean, they knew a lot about the book, you know, so they must yeah. have read it. it. It's just, it's truly mind-blowing the things that people will say to people that they don't even know. It, it truly is. I would never get on some thread and I, I could never do it. I can't either. I usually just scroll past that stuff. So, but I found it refreshing that I don't, I don't, you know. everybody was so forgiving. You know, because a lot of the time it's like this huge, like affairs or whatever become this like huge blow up and then like yeah. friendships are ruined. Yeah. Like everything just like <laughs> melts down. And it was kind of nice to see like the close knit friends didn't judge her. Oh, judged no. the main character, they no. stuck by your side, you know, they stuck to their guns, you know, like, you're, right. you did not make a good choice, but I still love you anyways, where exactly. a lot of people are like, I can't watch you do this, so I'm just not going to talk to you anymore. I know. So, it was refreshing to actually read that, because a lot of authors just go for the drama. Yeah, yeah. I, well, you know, and I was trying to, I was trying to weave that into the story about her. I mean, the story was about her. Yeah. And it was about how I dealt with that and how I grew from the time she was diagnosed until she passed. And I'm, I'm a totally, completely different human now. Yes. I mean, I was really selfish, really um, spoiled. And, you know, I'm still a spoiled girl because I'm the baby of the family. But, you know... I can see, I can see a lot of things about me that weren't pleasant to be around. We'll put it like that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. And then, I'll, I, 
Ella Ray will call and she goes, did you see such and such on that review? And I'm like, no, I did not see it. <laughs> no, and it full like well like that you don't. They were supposed to like me at first. <laughs> That's funny. Ah! Anyway. What happened? What did I do? There we go. Hello. You back. Did I'm I just back. See, there you are. See me? Okay. All right. I'm over here by the tomato plant. I cannot grow a plant to save my life. I've tried. Tried many a time. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yes. In instead of a, a, a green thumb, Heather's got a black thumb. It's true. Oh, I get it. I can grow a few things, but some stuff is just, I mean, you know, my mama will come over here and rescue it. <laughs> yeah, my, hus my husband has to rescue all my plants. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like, Philip, save it. Save it. Yeah, it, it's, I don't know what it is. I, I do exactly what everybody tells me to do, and it's like, I don't know. <laughs> like making biscuits. I do what everybody tells me to do. Okay, Michael. Mm hmm. I have a question for you. Okay. When you were writing this book, were, did you like have to like stop from the memories of everything that was going on, or did you have to like power through? Did it cause like a lot of emotions? Not until the chapter where she I knew she was going to die, because I it flew out of me like I mean I cannot even tell you. It was it it was like I couldn't make it stop. And um, I was sitting on my porch one day working, and um, I started thinking about a night <laughs> that eventually became the first chapter. And I think at the time it was it was very it's very hard. I, I'm not a crier, and <laughs> you know I think I was grieving her, and I I was just mad, which is the way I kind of process things. Mm -hmm. Instead of wailing the, and um, I started remembering that night, and I started writing it down, and I literally, I didn't shed any tears about it until I got to the, the chapter where I knew she was gonna die, and then I cried for days. Oh Just no. Just days, oh, no. and I'm, and like I said, I'm not a crier, and my hubby, hubby would come in and look at me, and I'd be wailing, and he'd go, "What is it?" And I'd go, "Get out!" <laughs> so, you know. <laughs> well, Poor you thing. were. <laughs> he was glad when it was over. Uh, you, you weren't alone. Uh, I, I texted Heather when I got finished reading it, and I was like, I have cried for the past four hours. Oh. And I'm like, and it's not pretty crying. It's like total oh, hot mess. You've yeah, got you've got everything just running from your eyes and your nose yeah. and blubbery and uh and fluid. A redhead, can't, a redhead can't cry pretty either. <laughs> My face turns as red as a, a Christmas ball. <laughs> Yeah, I pretty much got the exact same text from my sister, Tara. She was like, I just finished the book. I can't stop crying. Oh, yes. And I think uh, a lot of mine had to do with uh, feeling the empathy for the characters. There? Yes. Feeling the empathy for the characters. I brought up some memories of my own. And anyways, all right. So, no. <clears throat> nope. Uh oh. Are we losing you? Oh no. Maybe. You there? Are we? We're there? here. We're here. Okay. We can okay. still hear you. Uh, all right. You? Yes. Okay. Welcome back. Go ahead, Jen. So, um, as an avid book reader, I'm always on the lookout for a good book. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering, what are the books on your nightstand? Oh, well, this is going to be very interesting for you because I don't read. On really? Thursdays, 
I go to my mailbox and I get my Sports Illustrated out and I read it from front to back and I'm done reading for the week. What? I know, I know that freaks people out, but I just, I read Stephen King when he comes out with a new one. I, I don't, I don't read. I don't have time to read. Okay, so Stephen King. Uh, so that means that you read the Tower, Dark Tower series? I didn't like that series. Did you, Okay, the question is, did you stop where he told you to stop, or did you keep going? In the Dark Tower? Yes. I did not read that. I don't like that. I didn't like that Dark Tower series. Oh, okay. Yeah. The Stand is my favorite book. Okay. From him, I think my all-time favorite book is To Kill a Mockingbird, which I read when I was... I don't know, 10, and then read it again. I read that about once a year, To Kill a Mockingbird, but the, I literally, I do not read. I don't have time to read. I don't, there's always something going here on this place, and I mean, this is a working cattle farm, and it's, you just, you know, there's no time to lay around with bond uh, and eat, <laughs> read anything, because I'm, I'm always chasing goats or something. By the oh, time. I want to go. I want to go too bad. <laughs> yes, <laughs> they're little. They are. Um, they will destroy anything you have quickly if they are not in their pen. <sighs> it's okay. I probably and wouldn't have you, anything like, else. I have entered the world of hot flashes, and I'm a having one. Oh no. Woo. In the heat, too? Oh, That's all right. It'll pass. It doesn't matter if I'm standing in a beer cooler. If it's ready, it's, I'm going to get one, I'm going to get it. I have one in the swimming pool the other day. <laughs> I guess if you're going to have How one anywhere. That? It's something Having to look one in the forward to, pool. ladies. Yes. <laughs> something to look forward to, ladies. It's coming for you. Oh, man. Oh. Okay, since you said you you loved Kill Mockingbird, have you at least heard anything about um, the new her one? other book? Her new one? I do not want to read Ghost at a Watchman. I'm not going to read that. You're not? I can't I read it. To, I don't want to mess with the memory of Atticus Finch. Oh, so you've heard. <laughs> yeah, I'm not messing with the memory of Atticus Finch. That's yeah. the exact same and reason why Owen's I... that's book, too. Oh, yeah. That's the exact that's same reason why I can't read it. I can't do it. I mean, that that book was perfection. Mm -hmm. it, why why would you do that to him? It's like guess, somebody trying to write the sequel to Gone with the Wind, which irritated me too. Well, I did read Scarlet, uh, mainly because I was stuck at Grandma's for a couple of weekends, <laughs> and um, it was on the bookshelf. So it. it was either a Lewis L'Amour or the oh. Scarlet sequel. And, oh. well, I had had enough of audiobook Lewis L'Amour to last me a while. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, man. Yeah. I was about to say something, and it just, like, flew out of my head. <laughs> Happens to me all the time. I hate when that happens. I was like, on the tip of my tongue, and then there it goes. Um, well, is there anything you can share with us about Memories and Magnolias that um, maybe we don't know, or maybe our audience would be interested on in finding out? Um, that... I'm not sure. Um, they added the book to Goodreads. And they have the little synopsis on there, so okay. you can get that off of there. Um, it's I had fun with it. I did have fun writing it. She, I, I like the the main character's name is JC, and her friend's name is Georgia. And I liked Georgia. Georgia was fun. Georgia was a lot like me. <laughs> nice. Um, <laughs> but I'm having to write. You know, I was trying to kind of calm her down for the publisher because I know you know there's things they don't like so I had to write JC and I, I had to think of somebody that was calm and would would not react to situations like I would react and um, so I had fun with her I had fun writing it I had fun writing it okay 
Well, Heather, but you got I, another one? I oh. tell you, when it says the end, I'm glad to see it. Oh, no. <laughs> so what is your writing process? Do you start with like an outline or do you just no. start writing? I just sit down and start writing. Yeah. Okay. Now, the first one, you know, it was pretty much just remembering. Yeah. But uh, this one, I would, I would, and this is horrible, but I would think if I needed something, if if I needed something like, if somebody was going to say something stupid, I would think about somebody I know that's not like the brightest light in the shed, you know. And I'd be like, oh, I wonder what she would say. And then I'd just go for that, which is awful. Isn't that awful? But, um, well, I think we've all met a couple of those uh, people that are a yes. couple of crayons short of a full box. Exactly. Yes. So anyway, are just like, you know, I would think, okay, what would you do if you were in this situation, but you wouldn't react like you would react? And then I'd think about, okay, because I'm very impulsive. I've always been very impulsive. So I just think about then what would a smart person do in this situation <laughs> instead of someone that's not so impulsive? You know, I, I've always operated under the um, assumption that it was easier to ask for forgiveness instead of permission. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. So um, that ain't always a good thing, but it's always kind of worked out for me. It's been your, I guess, way of life for so long. Yes. Um. Hmm. So the um, the hummingbird cake is that your favorite type yes. of cake? I'm not really a sweet eater. Uh -huh. Um, I fudged mm -hmm. on the hummingbird cake because I'm not. I don't care for hummingbird cake, really. I like. Uh, I'm a bread girl. Hmm. I know. Isn't that disappointing to hear me say that? <laughs> that I don't really like hummingbird cake. <laughs> but it's not, well, I don't really like. I'm, I just don't like sweets so much. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I like a pound of cornbread and a pan of biscuits. Now we could tear up some cornbread. I could do biscuits and cornbread. I just like food. I'm gonna be honest. Me too. I can probably. I love food. <laughs> Me too. Oh. Me too. I love food too much. Yes, because of this book, I actually made hummingbird cake for the Did first you? time. Did you like it? I loved it. Did I you? I loved it so much. <laughs> and then I ate it for breakfast the next morning. <laughs> you know, it well, good. I just, uh, there's something about bananas in a cake that kind of grosses me out. Do you eat banana bread, though? Because it kind of just tastes like banana not bread really. to me. Oh, okay. I just, mm, just not crazy about the sweets, though. Mm. Well, I hate to tell y'all this, but yep. we made one today because... Uh, yes. Um, because, actually, my brother read your book, too. Mm -mm. And, yes, he, he was doing book club with us. He's over on the other computer logged in. What's up, brother? <laughs> Johnson says hello. Um, and um, I promised him that if he did book club with me that... He would get a cake out of it. See? So you make your uh, best promises, don't you? I know. So, so I had to do one by tonight. So we did one earlier today, uh, and then all the while he keeps asking uh, before he starts reading it. He's like, "So, um, do we have to go bag you some hummingbirds to make this cake?" Ooh, and I'm gonna get I'm cake at one right now. And I'm like, "No, I'm there's no hummingbirds right in it." Uh, oh, my goodness. My son asked the same question. Are there some <laughs> in this cake? I'm like, no, dear. That's... Oh. So, um, so for those of you who are wondering how it came to be, um, it came over, the hummingbird cake recipe came over in the 70s from um, Southern Living and was the first to publish it in the States and it came from Jamaica and it was known as the Dr. Cake. 
The doctor cake. Uh, a doctor cake. I guess you mm. gave it to the doctor when he treated you. Oh, maybe so. Mm, we those call lucky it the weight cake. Yes. We call oh. it the weight cake because my, my mama takes it everywhere. To everybody that dies, she takes it. Oh, no. The weight cake. You walk oh. in her kitchen and if there's one cooking, you're like, who died? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I guess that's one way to. Uh, no, I, um, I guess that kind of it'll bring us full circle into about the um, the southernness of uh, taking. Well, I guess it's not just southernness, but taking food to awake. You know, if somebody dies, you're you're um, you're um, expected to show up with right. a casserole or something sweet or. That's exactly right. <laughs> and. Um, that's exactly right. And it's really nice when somebody shows up with a, a ten gallons of Brunswick stew. I, I don't know what that fan. is. Really? Um, well, we um, we have some family friends that uh, when my grandpa passed, they made the best Brunswick stew, and I have tried. I, I guess, like Kerrigan, I have tried for years to get this recipe for Brunswick stew out of him, uh, and he just won't give it up. I'm telling you, Southerners funny about that. They are. My grandma was funny about what she put in biscuits. I, you know, she carried that to her grave. She would. She never told us, and can't nobody make a biscuit like my grandma. Oh, no. I don't know what it was. She always she. Did, she dipped snuff. She always said she spit in it, which was truly disgusting, but she, <laughs> that's what she told us. <laughs> oh. There's that lovely picture there. Oh. And and you were wondering, Heather was talking about putting the, uh, was it making lavender biscuits last time? Yes. With our other book. Um, uh-huh. And, and um, there you go. Instead of lavender biscuits, it's snuffle biscuits. Snuff biscuits. Yeah. I know. It's truly Ugh. great. That's what she told us. That was her story, and she stuck to it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Oh. You okay over there, Jen? Yes. Sorry. Okay, uh, I forgot to turn the mic off while I was sneezing. Oh. It's okay. <laughs> I'm still trying to hide to take a drag off a cigarette. I'm all sure right. I'm good. We're back. I'm sure if this goes out on the net, somebody will call and tell me I'm going to hell for smoking. So. <laughs> oh, goodness. Uh, Such a sense of entitlement. So, Heather, you got any more questions? Let me see. Last. <laughs> well, oh. while we're waiting, how about we get to uh, one of the first discussion questions for a group? Okay. Um, and we decided to stick with the ones at the end of the book for right now. Uh, we have a couple of our own, but as considering okay. it's getting a little late, let's throw one out there. So, okay. do you feel the town of Bon Du Falls was a Good character day. in the in the book? Absolutely, absolutely. I think all small towns have their own unique settings and their own unique people, and I absolutely feel like um, things that happened were because of where I was. So yes, I do feel like yes. Absolutely, I feel like it was a character. Ooh. Do y'all? Did y'all get that? Uh, yes. Well, it, it, um, I love the part where every little girl at five years old knows that uh, either you were born there, you married somebody <laughs> from there, or your grandparents was from there. If you, just you don't just in, show up. Yeah, if you just moved in all willy-nilly, it's like, well, honey, there's something wrong going on there. Exactly. And we're still like that. We're still like that. I mean, somebody new can come up and be like, I'm, I may like them fine after a little bit, but I'm like, why are they here? What? What? Who are they? Who's that? 
Who knows? Who knows? You know, we're all like that. You have to figure out who their people are, how they're connected. Yes. Right. Okay. I don't know. I've never. I mean, I've been in small towns, but not in a town so small where you literally know almost every single person. Oh yeah. And I always love. There were like thirty-two people in my in my graduating class, I think. Oh goodness. I think it was like thirty-two. And <laughs> we had over five hundred. That was a decent-sized class. Man. Could not imagine that. This ain't a big place. <laughs> I can tell. Is it one traffic light or two? There's no there's no lights. There's no light? No, no traffic light. lights. No traffic no lights. A caution Man, light? That... A caution light. We have a, a caution, caution light. <laughs> That's uh, uh like some of mine, uh uh family there from uh, really small towns and um, I know to get to their house I turn right at the traffic light or caution light. Exactly. Caution light. We use landmarks a lot like um, turn where Jim Bob hit that hog a couple <laughs> years ago and we all know where that is. <laughs> you know? That's amazing. So, and just bless anyone it's, that you know, it's decides to visit. To us. Turn where Jim Bob hit the hog and go about a mile down that road and you'll see him. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. I love it. I know. Well, Heather, you got any directions for us from for Savannah? <laughs> Besides Jennifer, don't get lost in the ghetto again. Oh, friend. <laughs> you just turn down the... You could turn down any street and you'll end up in the ghetto, friend. It's It's... Kind of rough. You can be on like the fanciest. You looking at the fanciest house, multi-million dollar house. You turn down, turn a corner, and bam, just run down houses all over the place. Poor Savannah. Hmm. I need the um, facelift. Just a little though. Yeah, we're just you know, we don't have any. It's not. It's not like we worry with socioeconomic standings and I mean we've all grown up together all of us mm -hmm. yeah so and everybody knows everybody's mom and daddy and we just don't have we don't have any kind of racial tension or I mean it's either like you're a jackass or you're not a jackass and if you're not we're friends <laughs> Amazing. I don't have anything to do with you I, you know so I we, guess we don't have that really that must make it easy, not easier, but it must make it, well, a little easier to um, find, like, a good, honest friend. You know, I get, yeah, I get, you know, I'm just, I don't have anything to compare it to. So I don't know if it's, if it made it easier or it, I like this, I like that this life is simple, you know, and yeah. that, um, the things that go on around here are revolved around church and ball games, and I mean that's it. And that's why I tell people all the time, I'm proud of this book and I'm proud of the next one, but it's a very, very tiny part of a very, very fulfilled life. And I don't, you know, it's it's not. I'll, I get, I don't like for anybody around here to talk about it. Mm -hmm. Because I just kind of feel like, you know, that's my other life. It's not my real life. So, yeah. you know, I just, I, I like to keep this part separate from, these people know me. They know how cr crazy I am and stuff I've done and stuff. You know, it, I don't want them to ever think that I think I'm on some kind of higher plane because I strung some words together. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yes. So... I mean, I try to keep this way separated from them. They've been so supportive. So everybody here has been incredibly supportive. I just don't ever want to get to where they think, I think, because I did this, that I'm something special because I'm one of them. I'll always be one of them, always. So anyway, I like my little town. I like my little non-racial tension, really nice town. <laughs> Well, that's good, because a lot of people, not a lot, but from what you see, 
people get tired and they're like, oh, I'm tired of this small town. Like, I, again, I I did not grow up in a small town. Warner Robins was fairly small, but you have an Air Force base right there, so you constantly right. have people coming and going. And From that's right. all of America. Yeah, and that's the same with Savannah. There's two military bases yeah, here. I, so. yeah, I get, and I think a lot of it has to do with, Right. I think a lot of it has to do with wherever you were born. You know, it's just a mindset. It's it's yeah. who you are. Mm -hmm. It's just who you are is what I, I mean, that's how I feel about it. You can't take me to the city for too long because I get really nervous. And it's not like really nervous because there's too much going on, too much. There, It's like there's too many choices, you know, and I, I don't, I don't like it. I, I'm, this is nice. I, it's pretty. I'm glad I got to see it. I need to go back to the cow pasture. You know. I have a question. Do you actually play softball? Okay. Do I actually what? Did you actually play softball? Like Kerrigan. Like Kerrigan? Yes. I From... yes. Oh, I have no handbag coordination. Basketball so. and anything where they were keeping score. and yeah. Very competitive, I see. My sister doesn't either. She was not... No, she was, I am, I will, if we're playing checkers, I am here to beat you. And I'm not, <laughs> I, I mean, I'm here to beat the crap out of you. I don't want to do it a little bit. Oh, no. So, you know, yeah, I'm very competitive. Okay. Very competitive. And so is Ella Ray. And Elaine could not care if, didn't, why are we watching it? Why must we watch it? <laughs> All right, Miss Jen, do you have another question? Um, hold on. <clears throat> uh, excuse me. Uh, yes, I think we do have another question here. Uh, discussion question wise, uh, do you think El Ray was much wiser than she exhibited? And yes, yes, I do. Yes. Why? Because I know people like El Ray. <laughs> yes, yeah, she's very, very, very smart and very attuned to things, and she'll let you think that she doesn't know what's going on when she's had your number for a long time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's she's very, very intuitive is a good word for her, too. She sees the big picture long before I do. She's a lot more people smart than... Um, to oh, me, yes. she came off yes. more people smart than... Um, like maybe book smart or something, but yeah, yeah. Well, for one thing, it, it sh if she's read a book in her life, it's the one I just wrote. <laughs> she's worse than me about reading. You know, we both read the Bible now. I forgot to mention that we do read our Bibles, but um, she's and that's she's done. She hates to read. Hmm. We know some folks like that too. I am. <laughs> and she'll probably end up calling us. Yes. I should get a text from her any minute now. Yes. Hey, Tara. <laughs> Shout out. Uh, oh, goodness. We love you. <laughs> um, so, uh, let's see. I guess our maybe our last question for the night. Uh, discussion wise is do you agree with Laney's I know it's um, hard um, but do you agree with Laney's decision not to take chemotherapy um, um, <clears throat> well I, I think we pretty much got your opinion on that one in the book but uh, having hindsight now uh, do you feel differently about it uh, I feel like anybody that is placed in that situation, it's their body and their decision. I don't, you know, until you've stepped into somebody's clothes, you don't know. I right. would not venture to say, you know, for anybody, they have to decide what's best for them. And, um, you know, there, there are worse things in life than heart attacks and car wrecks. And... Part of it is is a slow, horrible, aching, terrible month 
death's long death that is worse with pushing poison in your body. So I, um, yeah, I think everybody, that's just something that everybody needs to decide for themselves. I'm pretty much on the same page as far as that goes because I, I mean, I've never been in that place, so I could never tell you who's suffering with it. Like, right. You, know, you shouldn't do that, or that's not how you're supposed to be feeling about this. You should fight. Right. You know, I mean, that's not my call to make for you. Right. Right. I mean, it. You know, you get in a position where you don't care. You're not thinking about them really when you're screaming and hollering you're thinking about you mm-hmm. and you're thinking about I can't let her go and it, it and it gets to where you realize it had nothing to do with her comfort and everything to do with your comfort so I mean it's selfish it's selfish for you to try to decide anything for somebody else so yeah I I kind of agree with um, whatever you want to do in a situation like that is something you have to decide by yourself If you get that chance, I totally agree. Because, well, we'll move on. So, Heather, did you have any final questions or thoughts before we kind of wrap this up for tonight? Um, no, I mean, it was a joy meeting you, even if it's through the computer. I'm very, very, very grateful that you were willing to do this. Yes. Very grateful. Oh, well, next yes. time I come back by Savannah, we're going to have to have lunch. That yes, is, definitely. Yes. I'll, I'll make the track down there, too. So. Do it. You can just That'd be great. sleep at our apartment. Just let me know. <laughs> the couch falls out. It does. I will. <laughs> um, y'all keep up with me and uh, try to spread the book around and... Um, see what you can do with it and I appreciate so much being asked and I had a good time and the mosquitoes are eating me up oh so we'll let you head on inside then (laughs) (laughs) oh goodness or find the bug spray (laughs) yes either way stay in touch ladies All right. well and it looks like that is all we're going to have time for tonight, but we'll be posting the discussion questions along with our answers on um, the Book Lore website. So we hope that y'all will go on in there and give us your thoughts. Uh, we would like to, Heather and I want to say a big special thanks to Miss uh, Celeste Fletcher McHale for allowing us the opportunity to share and discuss her book and her life. And... Uh, we're looking forward to the return to Bondu Falls next year, and we're Woo! also we're really excited about uh, July's book club night because it's going to be a red, white, and blue revolution. So we want you to help us decide which will uh, which book will win book battle. And voting will be open in a couple of minutes, and it'll be open from now until Monday. Over on our July 2016 Book Club Night page or on social media with the hashtag you decide book battle outcome and your choice. And our choices are Heather, you want to give them out? Well, I don't have the authors, but the first book, let's see, is Flew Out of My Head Again and It's Sitting on My Desk A Rabble in Arms. <laughs> Yes. Okay. Uh, wow. and, and, uh, and the other one is Alexander Hamilton by Ron. You want to Sure. Chirac? Yeah, we're going to butcher that last name. We um, are. <laughs> but we will spell it correctly on every site that it's <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yeah. We will. Um, yeah. But it, uh, that one is the uh, the biography that the musical Hamilton's based off of. Yes, the hit Broadway play. Yes, and the other one, uh, Rebel, Rabble, Rebel in, arms. in Arms, is a classic revolutionary tale. That so. I've heard good things about, so 
go on over to follow along and book lore productions and all their social media sites and vote and until next time we look forward to more upcoming and original content including our short story Saturday which Woo! has already started on follow along blog and which will be starting in July on book lore productions and we'll see you back here on the 29th of July at 8.30. Bye, Miss Celeste. Bye. 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 Okay.